Learning physics is a lot like learning a new sport. It represents the formation of skills over time, rather than just the acquisition of information like who won the US Open last year. When I first learned to play tennis, our coach made us focus on things like how to grip the handle correctly, how to stand with respect to the net, how to take a forearm swing. We would air swing, you know, before even hitting a ball. Similarly in physics, as we learn a problem-solving format, it can feel slow at first and frustrating, but it lays a foundation for success later on. Just as regular practice in a sport prepares you for game day, regular practice in physics will prepare you for test day. Now that practice means doing the reading outside of class, completing the problems correctly and using the format that will equip you to solve harder problems later on. I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we're asked to determine the total land area of the United States as a percentage or a fraction that would be required to meet the electrical demand of the United States if only solar panels were used to produce that electricity. Now, this doesn't involve using a specific physics formula. Rather, it involves considering the relationships between the variables and basically conversion. So what we're talking about is a unit analysis type of problem. We're going to use unit analysis As we develop this problem, we will consider what we're given and what we need and we'll make a plan for how to evaluate the problem. So for starters, we're given that each person uses about 1.5 kilowatts of electricity and that the sun delivers about 300 watts per meter squared of the Earth's surface area. And since we're using solar panels, we're also told that the efficiency, overall efficiency of these panels can be estimated at 20%. That means that not all of this solar energy can be converted directly to electricity with the technology that is available now. Now this doesn't seem like much information and there may be more that we need. Let's start by making a step-by-step -step plan and we'll see what comes out in that process. First of all, we always want to start by considering units. We want to make sure that the numbers we use are in MKS units, and if not, we'll convert them. Next, we need to determine the total demand because right now all we have is a rate per person. So to determine the total demand, we're going to need uh, the population of the U.S. Next, after we determine the total demand, we need to figure out how much land area will be absolutely will be required to meet that demand. Now the problem asks us to express this as a fraction or a percentage of the US land area. So we need to express the results of 3 as a percentage, and for this we're going to need the total land area of the U.S. Now as we make computations along the way, we're going to keep the significant figures that appear in our computations. But before we report our final answer, we want to consider how many significant figures is appropriate to use. All right, so let's evaluate this problem as we consider our units we see that uh, the demand is given in kilowatts per person and we need to convert that to watts so if we have 1.5 kilowatts per person we want to multiply that by 1000 watts per kilowatt because watts is the unit we want to end up with 
So kilowatts cancels with kilowatts, and we get 1,500 kilowatts, not kilowatts, the whole point was to convert, wasn't it? Okay, 1,500 watts per person. And you may not consider this unit conversion, but let's make a note that 20% efficiency can be expressed in decimal form as 0 0.20. Next, we need to figure out the total demand. To do that, we will use this rate of demand that we determined. And we see that to be left with a total number of watts, we need to get rid of the unit of person in the denominator by multiplying by the number of persons in the United States. However, we weren't given that in this problem. There's a number of resources you could use to estimate this. Numerous internet sites and encyclopedia, better make it recent, we're growing fast. Uh, let's use 300 million as our estimate, and we'll think about that some more later as to whether that was a reasonable choice. So we get a total demand then of 4.5 times 10 to the 11th watts. Now, if we want to get from watts to how many meters, a total area that we need for production, we're going to multiply 4.5 times 10 to the 11th watts, and we're going to need some way to divide out watts and to be left with an area. Now, we were given the rate of energy production, or the rate that the sun is delivering electrical energy to the earth, and that was for each meter squared, the sun is delivering 300 watts. Now we're also told that the solar panels aren't 100% efficient in converting that into electrical energy, and in fact it's 20% efficient. So what we actually get out per meter squared is that efficiency times what the sun is delivering. So then we will have watts canceling out, and we will be left with meters squared, and that is going to give us uh, 7.5 times 10 to the 9th meters squared are needed for the total production. To express this as a fraction of land area, we need to know the land area of the United States. Now a fraction or a percentage is a unitless number, so we are going to divide something by meters squared to get that number. Again, we're not given the total land area in this problem, and you can look it up on various internet sites or encyclopedia. So we're going to estimate that as 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 12th meters squared. Now when I looked this up online myself, many times this is expressed as hectares or kilometers squared, and you will need to take that into consideration when you come up with a figure in meters squared to use in this problem. So this gives us then 0 .000978. No units because meters squared has canceled with meters squared. To express this as a percentage, you would multiply by 100. As we consider this and how to report our final answer, let's look back at what we were given. We have two significant digits here, one significant digit here, one here. Let's report our answer to one significant digit which means we're going to round it to um, total land area needed is 0 .001 or 0.1% of U.S. land area. So we have a number here. But before we decide we're finished, let's think about it. Let's assess our answer and see if it's reasonable. How can we do that? Well, first of all, we want to consider our unit analysis. Not the conversion that we considered at the beginning, but as we did our multiplication along the way, by including the units, we can double check and make sure that we had watts per person times persons, that left us with units of watts, and we had watts divided by meters squared over watts, which gave us meters squared in area. We had meters squared divided by meters squared, so the units are gone, which is okay since we were looking for a fraction or a percentage. Secondly, 
Let's consider the values that we used for population and for the total land area. Now different sources might give you slightly different numbers. For example, I also found uh, population estimates of 310 million and I found land estimates of 9.83 times 10 to the 12 meters squared. Now if you redo the calculations with these numbers, you still come out obviously with a slightly different answer, but rounded to one significant figure, it ends up being the same. So by double checking our sources, seeing what slight differences would make in our answer, and by unit analysis, we have confidence that our estimate is correct.